since my last video about the biggest number that can fit in a text message, some even larger numbers have been found. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, because you guys had a lot of questions that I need to answer first for this to make sense. And if you haven't seen that last video, then make sure to watch that first. I saw a ton of comments about busy beavers and other similar functions like Rayo's number or even utter oblivion. A busy beaver function defines a number based on the largest value you can get by using a limited number of symbols or states which was exactly what I was trying to do in that first video. In fact, there's already a lambda busy beaver function for binary lambda calculus. So that's the answer, right? Is this the largest number that can fit in a text message? Yes, but not so fast. For something to count as the largest number, at least by my rules, there needs to be some kind of instruction or program to generate that number. But these other functions are uncomputable. They just declare the number exists, obviously, but you have no way of knowing how big it really is, or how you would produce that number. So it's hard to really call this a number. It's more like a placeholder where the number would go when it's discovered. And proving that a number is a busy beaver is very difficult. Did you know that the five-state Turing machine busy beaver was only proven this year in 2024? And it's unlikely that a six-state busy beaver will ever be proven in our lifetime. Another popular comment I got was, why don't you just take the largest number and add one, or square it, or do something crazy with it? Technically, it will make the number larger, but it isn't a larger number class. So for example, if we were only able to use up arrow notations, it doesn't matter how you arrange them or how many times you repeat them, you'll never reach a number from a higher number class using up arrows, because you would still need more space than the observable universe to write it down. All this other garbage here doesn't really matter because it doesn't move the needle at all on whatever kind of super log scale we're using to compare big numbers. So when I say the biggest number, I mean the biggest class of number. This is not a scale we're accustomed to thinking in, so I can see how that can come across as confusing. If you want to build up some more of that mathematical thinking, then check out today's sponsor, Brilliant. My son actually loves Brilliant. He's taking the course right now on Infinities, which is just one of the many courses Brilliant offers. Brilliant's comprehensive range of math courses really are built for learners of any level, from brushing up on fundamentals to advanced concepts. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with the concepts, a method proven to make learning six times more effective than just watching videos, in lessons you can work on in just minutes every day. It's easy to learn anywhere, on your phone, laptop, whenever you have time and it's completely free to try for 30 days. So if you're on the fence, it's super easy to just give it a try. Just remember to use the URL brilliant.org slash codeparade so you'll get the 20% discount if you decide to sign up for the premium subscription. Thanks, Brilliant. All right, now let's start where we left off last time because there's a reason the buckholes ordinal function compresses so well. There's a really simple and elegant algorithm using nuclear array notation, which kind of plays out like a Hydra game. So imagine you're Hercules and you need to defeat a Hydra. How many chops does it take? This kind of Hydra is restricted to binary trees, meaning each node is either a head or a two-way split. And there's two rules for how to cut heads. First, if the left branch is a single head, you can always chop it, causing the right side to become the new root. So we can define the natural numbers like this, where stacks n heads tall take n cuts. But what about when the left branch is a tree? In this case, the second rule says we need to just recursively play the Hydra game on the left node, and when we get the result, we search to find any instances of the right branch and replace them all with a copy of the entire tree. Now, it might sound like this would create hydras that could grow forever, 
but surprisingly, any Hydra like this can always be defeated in a finite number of steps. And making a Hydra of this form, that's n heads tall, grows at the rate of the buckhole's ordinal function, which is a lot faster than the tree function. There's a stack overflow post by Pat Kale that goes over the proofs in a lot more detail, so I'll link that below because it's a really fun read. Okay, now it's time to reveal what the newest largest number is. This next number comes from Bashiku Matrix System, or BMS. This is a really powerful notation, but it's also more difficult to explain and program because it has more rules for the reductions. And that's why it took a while to translate to binary lambda calculus. But by using a really clever data representation, it was eventually finished by none other than the same Pat Kale, who managed to fit it in under 52 bytes of BLC, which is even smaller than the buckhole's ordinal function we came up with before. So how fast does BMS grow? Well, with a single row called a primitive sequence system, the function has a growth rate of epsilon naught. BMS with two rows is called a pair sequence system, and the growth rate ordinal is equivalent to the buckholes ordinal where we left off last time. What about three rows? Or four? Or n rows? Well, now we run into the issue of running out of standard ordinals for the notation. So I'm going to switch to a different system to represent larger ordinals, called proof-theoretic ordinals, or PTOs. I'm going to warn you now, this is the part of the video where things start getting tricky to explain. I had to do so much research to learn this stuff, and I still barely understand a lot of it, but bear with me, it's worth it. So let me explain what proof-theoretic ordinals are. Whenever we prove theorems, we use a system of axioms and rules for deduction. And depending on which axioms we start with, we can get different proof systems. These proof systems each have different strengths, which correspond directly to ordinals. You can think of the proof-theoretic ordinal as the limit for the largest level of recursion you can use to prove statements in that system. So for example, Peano arithmetic, or first-order arithmetic, has the proof-theoretic ordinal epsilon naught. The Buckholz ordinal happens to be the proof-theoretic ordinal for this system, which is a strong subset of second-order arithmetic. Diagonalizing BMS is proven to be larger than that, but less than or equal to full second-order arithmetic, so it's definitely a larger class of number. But we're not done yet there's still an even larger number that was ported to Lambda Calculus recently, and that's Loader's number. You see, second-order arithmetic has the same PTO as System F, which is the typed Lambda Calculus. And beyond that, we have System F Omega, where the types can have types recursively. And after that is the more expressive Calculus of Constructions. It has the really nice property of being strongly normalizing. That means, if you think of the proof system like a programming language, all programs are guaranteed to terminate. So we're actually able to iterate over all possible programs of a given length and add up their runtimes to get a truly massive number. This isn't normally possible in regular Lambda Calculus because of the halting problem, which means programs can run forever and never terminate. So how much space does Loader's number take in BLC? Well, John Tromp, no, not that one, was able to optimize it and create a number that exceeds Loader's number in 233 bytes, which unfortunately doesn't fit into a text message. But it does fit nicely into a tweet if you're using Unicode, so that's still really cool. And believe it or not, that's the largest computable number class proven so far. For real this time. There are bigger proof-theoretic ordinals for systems like ZFC, and some fast-growing functions like greedy click sequences are claimed to reach that growth, but none of these have been rigorously proven yet. So it looks like we're at the end of our journey, for now. That's the largest number class that's proven so far, regardless of size limitations. At least, until there's some new breakthrough. I hope this is a much more satisfying answer. 
Huge thanks to the Googleology community for helping me research this topic. And thanks for watching.